Hi everybody, my name is Corey Hart, I'm an Education Specialist with Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. I'm here with our fourth and final series of our Scat and Track program. On the other series, we've already focused on deer, bobcat, and snowshoe hare. Today, we're going to be focusing on raccoon. Raccoon are one of the most widely distributed medium-sized animals in North America. I bet just about all of you are familiar with them. They're, the reason we're all familiar with them is because they're so opportunistic. They'll live just about everywhere. That's it, things from uh, rural environments, so like out in the woods, and places that are not so rural. So they're even known to be in city environments. Uh, so places that we might not think of having animals, like New York City, raccoons thrive there. Or middle of the forest, so Green Mountain National Forest, raccoons do great there as well. They'll do well just about anywhere, which makes them a really neat animal. Identification of them, well, they're a fairly easy animal to ID. And I have one here with me now. Hopefully you can see it. This is just a pelt of one. What you can't really see is they actually have a black mask on their eyes, or around their eyes. That's one of their standard characteristics. And then of course their nice bushy tail. Raccoons are known for being opportunistic, but they're also extremely intelligent animals. Uh, that's not, a lot of people don't realize that about raccoons, because it's very common that we find them around our trash bins and dumpsters and things like that. Uh, but they're very, very intelligent. Uh, they're also excellent climbers and swimmers. So while raccoons may be very intelligent, they are known to be very aggressive. Raccoons are what are known as a nocturnal animal. If you don't know what nocturnal means, nocturnal means that they actually sleep during the day and they're active at night. So during the day, I'm probably not going to see a raccoon wandering around. It'd be very unusual. Uh, at night though, that's when I would be finding raccoon, which is typically why I don't usually see raccoons because I'm usually not out on a hike at night. Uh, but I do find sign of them during the next day. I'll find a sign. Why I'm at this water right here is actually because of how raccoons eat. Uh, one thing raccoons do, they don't always do this, but if they're near water, they will. And it's actually called washing their food. Their paws, or their, their hands, are very, very sensitive. And what they'll actually do is they'll take their paw with their food, dip it in the water, and wet it. And then they'll feel around, because if fingers are so sensitive, and it's rumored that, or thought that what they're actually doing is looking for bad spots on the food. They only do this, though, if they're near water. If they're not near water, they'll just eat it. Uh, they're not going to go out of their way to wash their food. But an interesting fact, though, is that if they are near water, they will actually dip their food in the water to wash it. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what they eat. So they're known as a very opportunistic animal, and they'll eat just about anything. That could be eating out of a dumpster. We don't like to think about that, but it is something raccoons are known for. Uh, and as part of this, we need to talk about that a little bit. And when I say they're opportunistic, it means they're really easy, good at finding food. Uh, and where there's easy food for them to ask, access, they'll go to it. So if there's an, a dumpster or a trash bin nearby, a raccoon will go after that. Uh, but other things they'll go after is things like crayfish. Uh, not something you might have think of. So like cra raccoons kind of hunting around a shoreline. They'll go out, eat berries, uh, eat just about anything they can find. Uh, they'll also eat things like dead animals. Now we'll talk a little bit about where they den. So we talked a little bit about their habitat. They live just about anywhere. It's very easy. Uh, but where do they den? Where do they sleep? Well, they sleep in uh, typically uh, kind of holes in the ground for the most part. They're not so much dens, uh, but they might sleep in, let's say there's a barrel or something. They'll sleep in that. Anywhere they can get like a nice tight nook and cranny. That's going to be where uh, raccoons sleep. When it comes to winter though, raccoons actually don't hibernate. They're, they're, uh, they stay up and moving all winter long. They do sleep a lot longer though. So during the winter time to help conserve energy, they sleep for a lot longer than they do during the summer. But they are up and moving all throughout the winter. 
So now we're going to talk a little bit about how to find sign of them. Well, easy enough with the raccoons is first thing is, well, we, with all these animals we've been talking about, is we want to find the habitat, right? Well, with raccoon, just about anywhere I look is going to be the right habitat. So step one is complete. Just step outside and you're probably found raccoon habitat. It's nice, easy, done. Uh, if I'm at a school, like most of you might, might be, uh, I would try looking around the sides of the, a field out back or a playground. You'll probably see signs there. Or perhaps you have dumpsters at school. While it's not something we like to think about, there very well may be signs of raccoon near around the dumpsters. Because what are they doing? They're looking for easy food. And if there's easy food in those dumpsters, that's where they're, gonna, they're probably going to be some tracks right there. Uh, if you're at home looking, I would start looking around uh, field edges or anywhere that's kind of, you might have water. So when, as with any animal, you want a spot where it's decent cover and spots for them to escape to as well. Uh, so just get out there, kind of wander, start looking, and you will find sign of raccoon. Uh, their tracks are fairly unique. So you're going to have a, a front paw that's a lot smaller, and then the rear paw is going to be a lot bigger. And they look kind of like fingers, and they're really, really cool. Here, let me show you. So right now I have some, some fake feet or plaster or replicas of them. So this first one right here, this would actually be the front. And you can see how it's got these very defined uh, fingers or that, that stick out. This allows them to actually grab and grab their food. And it's hard to see on here, but their paws are actually very, very sensitive. And you can kind of get an idea just by looking at it. And this allows them to grab their food and actually feel around. And they feel uh, with their paws a lot. That's kind of how they see a little bit too sometimes. They have great eyesight. Uh, but the paws help them to kind of feel a lot of different things. Then we have their rear feet, which are a lot larger. So we talked earlier about we classify when tracking animals uh, several different ways. We have walkers, we have waddlers, hoppers, bounders. With the raccoons, they're classified as a waddler. They kind of waddle when they walk. They got their rear foot, their front foot, and uh, they're very easy to find tracks of, especially in the snow. They're one of the most common animals we have in Vermont. So with any critter out there, I'm most likely looking for two types of things when I'm out there when I'm looking for my raccoon. I am looking for A, either tracks, or I'm going to be looking for scat, uh, which is from raccoon. Raccoon and scat doesn't always look the same. It's typically uh, cylinder shaped, but can vary a little bit depending on what that raccoon's been eating. Remember, they can eat a lot of different things. Uh, a lot of times there'll be berries in it. They like berries. Uh, but they could be, if it ate something dead, so like it ate a dead animal or something like that, or got in the trash, it could be a little bit different. It doesn't always look identical. Uh, but typically where I find raccoon scat, I'll probably have raccoon tracks nearby, and that helps me to narrow it down. So especially if I find scat out there where I don't know what it is, well, look around. Is there tracks nearby? And that'll kind of help you narrow it down and kind of confirm what it is. Uh, but same thing that we've been saying all along. If you find something you don't know what it is, you can always go out there, uh, take a photo or, or draw it, and then go back and look it up later. So that is actually all we have on for you for raccoons. There's a lot more information out there but that's all we have time for today. Uh, instead, what I want you to do is do some more research on your own. So, just like we've been doing with the other three animals, I want you to go out there and look for sign of raccoon. So, you're gonna go outside, take your pad of paper or a camera, try to find a track, try to find some scat, just go have some fun with your hiking. Uh, places you can hike, if you don't have anywhere near your house, there's state parks all across Vermont. There's wildlife management areas, there's town parks, there's all these places that you can go. Currently though, we're in the middle of a pandemic, as I'm sure everybody knows. So it's important to practice safe social distancing when I'm out there on my hike. So even though it's still winter, uh, when you go out there on your hike, make sure you bring your mask with you, just in case you pass anybody when you're out there, you can put it on and we can all be safe. That allows us to all go out there and look for tracks together. 
And that is all I have for you. Thanks for participating with us on these past four episodes of Scats and Tracks.